hello welcome to the AA solution channel in this video I will be presenting to us an introduction to dynamics and I'm going to begin by briefly touching on engineering mechanics mechanics primarily studies the effects of a force on the motion or rest of a body that is to say if you have a body being acted on by a particular force like this case where you have a woman pulling a vehicle mechanics tend to study what will happen to the body for this case the vehicle as a result of the force acting, acting on it then also you can have a, another body being pushed by someone else the response of the body as a result of the force acting on it is what mechanics studies it could be something else maybe force of a spanner acting on a boat so whatever the case may be mechanics tend to study forces and their effects on body they are acting upon and why do we study mechanics mechanics is an important course as it helps to prepare the students for engineering education and practice also mechanics provides the opportunity for students to practice the application of learned theories principles or concepts to simulate solutions of unfamiliar problems then apart from that mechanics helps to improve analytical conceptual and problem solving skills so one may get to see a lot of formulations and be able to be able to conceive ideas analyze a problem and prefer a solution so so in some mechanics helps to prepare the engineers for work in the field of practice which is basically to apply knowledge of science in the design of new systems or processes for a better life. And there are different branches of mechanics. We have mechanics itself that involves the study of the effect of forces on fluids, and that is called fluid mechanics. Also, we have mechanics of solid that involves the study of the effect of forces on solid objects. A mechanics of solid is further divided into mechanics of deformable bodies, Called what we call strength of materials so those courses that attack strength of materials mechanism of materials wherein you tend to see how a force can cause deformation of a body and there's the mechanism of rigid body that involves the effect of force on the body when the body is assumed to be rigid that the body is assumed not to undergo any form of of deformation and it is these mechanisms of rigid bodies that we are looking at and it's of different branches mechanisms of rigid body is what we study primarily as engineering mechanics and is divided into statics that involves the study of the effect of forces on body that are at rest and also dynamics that involves the study of the effect of forces of bodies that are in motion and dynamics dynamics could be kinematics that studies the motion of a body without reference to the forces or other factors that are causing the motion so in kinematics we tend to look at the geometry of a body alone that's the displacement velocity and acceleration as a function of time so it deals with the equations of motion for different types of motion whether it's rectilinear or curvilinear or it's a uniform motion or it's oscillatory motion or it's vibratory motion or whatever the case may be on the other hand kinetic studies motion in relation to the effect causing it that's kinetic studies forces and motion itself so it looks at the forces and its effects on the motion of the body it applies some relations such as the newton's law newton's second law of motion the impulse momentum principle as well as the energy principle then what are the concepts of dynamics that's the terms we we'll, we'll use and see as far as dynamics is concerned the first are the variables that describe the geometry of motion that's time displacement velocity acceleration then as well as um, certain items that relates or that finds much application in kinetics which are the force masses momentum impulse kinetic and potential energy then there is the concept of particles and rigid body as it affects the study of dynamics we're going to start by looking at time time primarily major sequence of events it um, tends to answer the question how long then apart from that it informs when an event took place time is just a 
192,631,730 periods of a particular state of Sershom, 133 atom. And the SI unit for time is seconds. Another concept to quickly look at is displacement and distance. It's used to describe the position of an object from a set point. And it informs the current position and the SI unit is in meters. So displacement or distance is used to tell where something or an object is positioned currently from a set reference point. And the SI unit is meters. And while one meter is equal to 1 million 650 763 units wavelength of a certain radiation of krypton at 15 degrees Celsius and 76 cm of mercury. Distance and displacement tends to answer the question where will it get to? How far will it travel? And there's a difference between and there's a difference between distance and displacement. Whereas displacement tends to be a vector quantity which is described as the shortest distance between two objects usually it has magnitude and direction on the other hand distance is a scalar quantity that describes the total length covered during movement from one point to another direction velocity and speed Velocity is just the rate of change of displacement with time. It answers the question how quickly or how fast an object would arrive or how fast an object arrived at a particular position. A body at rest is known to have zero velocity because it's not moving. Then the ratio of distance and time is speed and is a scalar quantity. The SI unit is meter per second, whereas velocity is a vector quantity. Acceleration, on the other hand, is the rate of change of velocity with time. How fast is velocity changing? Then apart from that, it answers the question, what is the rate of change of its speed or velocity? Then um, deceleration or retardation is negative acceleration. It's just a term that is used to describe a decreasing velocity. At what rate is the velocity reducing? The SI unit for, displace, for acceleration the SI unit for acceleration is meter per second square. The type of acceleration a body is undergoing is used to describe the motion of the body. For instance, we have what you call uniform motion, a kind of motion in which the acceleration is zero. We have what you call uniformly accelerated motion, is a kind of motion in which the acceleration is constant. It's constant and there's the non-uniformly accelerated motion, a motion in which acceleration varies with distance, velocity or time. Another concept is mass. It's just the quantity of stuff contained in the body. Mass is related to inertia. It is the tendency of a body to resist change in motion or position of rest. Yes, our unit for mass is kg. I want kg equals to the mass of platinum iridium cylinder of a diameter of diameter equal to its height kept in the International Bureau of Weights and Measure in France. Force is the action of one body on an older, any effect that tends to alter the position of a body or motion, that is the position of rest or motion of a body is termed force. It is characterized by its point of application, its magnitude and its duration. Those are the three key terms that are used to, three key things that are used to describe a force. Impulse and momentum. Impulse is just the product of force and time, while momentum is the product of mass and velocity. Particles and rigid body. A particle is a very small amount of matter which may be assumed to occupy a single point in space. Just one can assume it to have negligible dimension, both size and shape. You can assume the body to be negligible in terms of its size and shape when you're considering a body to be a particle and it's used for analysis in dynamics a particle for example you can have a ball that is being thrown by a man and the ball can be idealized to be a very small object neglecting its size neglecting its shape 
and is taken as a particle. On the other hand, a rigid body is a combination of large number of, of particles occupying fixed points with respect to each other. So if you have an object as shown and a force is applied at one point, the effect of that force will be different from when the force is applied at another point. So if the analysis that is being carried out is such that this effect of force is a function of the point where it's been applied to, we say we are considering it a rigid body and thus the dimension of the body is important for its analysis. It's important for its analysis. Then there is a, a general procedure that could help when one is solving problem in dynamics. If one could follow these steps properly, one will be able to solve any problem in dynamics. The first thing to do is to identify the information that is provided. And the information that is provided should answer the question, what kind of problem is this? And what variables we are given as far as the problem is concerned. Then the next thing to do is to identify what the question desires you to find, what, uh, what, is, what is being asked of you by the question. Then after that, you need to identify the suitable formula or procedure you need to solve the problem. Then you solve. And when you're solving, there are things you should be mindful of. The first is the uniformity of units. You must be consistent with units from when you're working to the final answer that you're presenting. And also, you have to be mindful of computational errors because it's very, it's very easy to make mistakes when you're solving problems in dynamics. Then the areas of coverage, briefly, as far as dynamics is concerned, we shall be looking at um, introductory aspects. Then we shall be looking at kin kinematics of particles that borders on rectilinear motion, covilinear motion, and relative motion. By relative motion, we're looking at motion of a system of particles. Then apart from that, we look into kinetics of particles. Kinetics of particles, we'll be dealing with the Newton's second law of motion, the impulse momentum principles, and the energy principle. And finally, we delve into kinematics of rigid body and kinetics of rigid body. And that will be all as far as dynamics is concerned. I want to thank you for watching and for your time. I do hope you subscribe to the channel. If you've not, if you've not done so, do well to hit on the subscribe button. Thanks.